Hey folks, welcome back to the workshop. Um, we're going to be talking about strain gauges, load cells and uh, strain gauge amplifiers today. I've been uh, trying to create an amplifier for my uh, load cell. This is the load cell that I'm going to use um, to measure uh, the crankshaft uh, uh, inertia forces. You probably remember it from the previous video. If you haven't seen it, check out my other videos. So uh, I have two of these brackets mounted on a uh, S-type uh, load cell and as the uh, piston goes up and down and shakes back and forth I want to capture that, I want to capture that force and then compare to uh, my analysis results. So uh, this load cell here is a commercially available load cell. They use it to uh, measure weight and uh, it's, it's a fairly simple design. It's got four uh, strain gauges in it and uh, those strain gauges, two of them are uh, set up for compression and two of them are set up for tension. So there's a hole inside the unit here and basically they uh, they seal it from the environment. These uh, load cells are in the most harsh environments. Uh, this is made out of uh, stainless steel and uh, I got a thousand kilo and a 500 kilo. So this one is a thousand kilo. It's got an M16 threaded hole on this end and on this end. And then the 500 kilo has a M12, I believe. So uh, this uh, load cell comes uh, without any connectors. So I have a couple of these aerospace type connectors. Uh, you can buy these on uh, eBay. So you have a male and a female. And uh, so this one goes into the instrument panel and this one goes on a cable. Uh, so they clocked, they go together only one way and uh, uh, w what I did is I basically applied it to the um, cable, soldered it on, there's some insulators and uh, built myself an amplifier. So the first one, <laughs> that's round one amplifier uh, was basically this was the circuit so this is an Arduino Uno um, got a shield on it uh, this is a, again a commercially available shield um, and then on the shield I put uh, two of these uh, load cell amplifiers these are made by Sparkfun and the number is HX711 uh, these are pretty widespread I would say uh, you can buy them for like 10 bucks a piece uh, I, I, I think initially the price was really attractive uh, to me and that's why that's why I did it uh, that way I, I, I did not think about uh, what these load cells are uh, supposed to do exactly for me as, as far as I concern uh, I was looking for a load cell uh, that will amplify the strain gauge uh, voltage uh, the way these strain gauges work is uh, here's a circuit okay so you have an excitation positive and negative so you basically send in 5 volts and then you measure on the other two terminals so if the strain gauge is completely balanced and it doesn't have load on it then you're gonna get zero voltage on the on the output so on the two output terminals you're gonna get zero voltage and then if two of these in tension, two of these in compression you know then the resistance here will drop, the resistance here will rise and so that will move the strain gauge off of the balance point. Now um, these uh, load cells are uh, have some calibration uh, documents here this is from China so I obviously can't really read that what I can read is this 
Okay, so at full load, when you apply 1,000 kilograms to the strain gauge, you're supposed to get uh, 2 millivolts. And uh, excitation doesn't really matter at this point. I, I know it sounds stupid, but you can excite it with 3 volts or 5 volts or 10 volts. You're still going to get 2 millivolts out of, the, uh, out of the strain gauge. So these are standard 350 ohm strain gauges. And... Um, there's some more information about them here. Uh, the, the, the point is that at full load, when it's running at 1,000 kilos or 500 kilos, whatever that full load is, you only get 2 millivolts. So now you need an amplifier to amplify that 2 millivolt. And so what I created here is pretty straightforward. Uh, I got these pins here. So initially I had some uh, female connectors that connected to this one. And... Uh, here you go. No, sorry, I lost them. Um, lost them somewhere. I need to be a little bit more organized. Uh, anyways, it's just uh, it's just a standard uh, five-pin connector. Uh, so why why do we have five pins? First of all when you only have four wires. So the, the, the four wires are, uh, as you can see here, red, black, white, green and yellow. So the red and black, those are the excitations, so 3 volts or 5 volts, 10 volts, whatever you use. And then the white and green, uh, those are the output or the sense wire, sometimes they call it. And then the yellow is basically chassis green. So because we are dealing with such a small uh, voltage, you know, only two millivolts. You want to run a cable here that's shielded, and basically uh, that shielding is connected to chassis ground. So that chassis ground is supposed to take care of the externally uh, induced, uh, you know, noise uh, that we might have in, in the wires. Um, so here is uh, here's one assembly. Uh, where I have the, the, the four wires attached. I don't have the number five. Uh, I, I, I've just done this uh, for testing. So anyway, uh, this uh, Arduino was placed in a box, uh, made a real nice box for it. Just like that, it would fit in. And uh, I can hook up the wires. Um, this was an old KVM switch box that I used, uh, made this plate, bolted it on, everything is super duper and uh, created uh, this, uh, added this screen. So the screen uh, uses a special protocol so you only have uh, four wires here, so basically two wires are powering the screen and then there are two other data cables uh, connected to this guy and the screen is going to lit up and it all uh, going to work and so I put together the schematic and uh, uh, did some breadboarding everything worked uh, then built this and tested it and uh, everything worked and then I realized that um, this is basically digital and it will limit uh, the frequency the refresh rate uh, to 10 Hertz Okay, and if you want more than 10 hertz, then you can go and uh, cut through this trace right here. So if you cut this trace, you're going to get 80 hertz. But it is still only 80 hertz. And uh, according to my calculations, when this crankshaft is uh, spinning, let's say, 5000 RPM, uh, that would be uh, around 83 uh, revolutions per second and if I want to have 360 points on the circle that would equal 30,000 samples per second or, or 30 kilohertz basically and uh, this guy limits the data acquisition to 80 hertz so it's no good the next thing I tried is uh, I found a web page. This is uh, Richard Naka. He's got an experimental rocketry website, and he's got a uh, 
schematic here, another uh, diagram, it uses an NIA122 chip. Uh, this is just uh, one of the uh, uh, strain gauge amplifiers. So what we have here, uh, this is a real interesting uh, uh, schematic. So we got two 9 volt batteries and one has the positive up here and the other one has the positive down here. And then you turn this switch on, there are two regulators, so it will take that 9 volt battery and then regulate the voltage to 5 volts. So now you got positive 5 volts, negative 5 volts, and so it will connect the positive 5 volts uh, to the uh, load cell. So you can see it, the 5 volt goes to the load cell, the other end is grounded. And then uh, it's reading uh, the voltage from the uh, strain gauges from the load cell. So that you got minus positive and negative load cell. And then this chip is basically connected to positive 5 volts and negative 5 volts. So we just have some passive CSM capacitors for filtering. And then this is the output. And so if you think about voltage, voltage is always a reference, it's like pressure, it's, it's relative to something. And so the, the guy, uh, you know, built uh, this schematic and, uh, you know, the intention was that, <laughs> the intention was that it can work in tension and in compression. Okay, so what happens here is uh, when you apply a tension to the strain gauge, it is going to give you, let's say, positive voltage output. If you apply compression, it's going to give you a negative voltage output. So that's why you need the positive 5 volts and the negative 5 volts. And so the, all the strain gauge amplifier is doing is just amplifying the signal that comes in. And then one important thing on the uh, strain gauge amp or, or, or in th these are called instrumental amplifiers is the gain. So there's a resistor here and uh, there's a formula uh, based on which you can calculate uh, what is the gain that you need and then for that gain uh, what is the resistance that, that you're supposed to use. And so my, in my case uh, you know uh, 2 millivolt max uh, was the input and I wanted to have 5 volts output so the gain was 2500 and uh, I need to use an 80 ohm uh, resistor and so I put together this schematic and uh, tried to tinker with it and it wasn't nice, it didn't work, these are the actual INA122 uh, microchips and uh, um, showed it to my buddy, he's a real uh, professional guy, he, he does this for a living, putting stuff like this together and uh, he didn't like the layout, he didn't like the way I breadboarded it, it was really, uh, I would call it amateur. Um, I'm, I'm not really good at it, um, I never really learned it, uh, I have a thousand of excuses um, and, and the thing didn't work. So my buddy uh, told me that uh, he can build a better amplifier and so he went ahead and uh, built an amplifier. This is actually his circuit and he modeled the circuit in uh, some kind of electronical code and what you have here are uh, two amplifiers and there's a third one here. Uh, this is actually the strain gauge circuit and he based it off of LM324N. Uh, and uh, usually when you look at these strain gauge amplifiers um, you have a, a case something like this so there's four strain gauge amplifiers in it so uh, legs one through three or pins have one strain gauge amplifier and then uh, this is either positive or negative voltage the center tab and then you have another strain gauge amplifier one more here this is the other positive or negative tab and then one more. So this chip contains uh, th three of these uh, logical gates or whatever they called. But anyways, this is the circuit he built. And he basically built the left side circuit and then based on the wiring and the schematic I built the right side. Uh, this is a lot cleaner design. 
So what we got here is uh, we got uh, 12 volt uh, coming in, we got positive and negative 12 volt and then we have two of these uh, uh, voltage regulators, some uh, capacitors here for filtering and then there's another voltage regulator down here. Uh, this will get us to 5 volts and I believe these are these are 9 volts, uh, 7912 CT. Uh, you know what? I think I think these uh, might be 12 volt regulators. And then uh, this circuit here basically is uh, mimicking uh, the strain gauge. Uh, the strain gauge is in the load cell, so there's four of these resistors connected. Um, so there's one set and there's another set because I have again I have two of these load cells. And then there are some passives here. Uh, this guy will set the gain. Uh, you can see that uh, it's between uh, these two lags. So these two will set the gain. So uh, we put this together. <laughs> we, we worked on it. And then we realized that um, uh, we need a lot more components. So initially, you know, I paid uh, basically uh, 25 bucks for these two and then I went back to DigiKey, spent another 50 bucks on components built the second one, uh, first I built it on a breadboard and then I built it on, on this protoboard that didn't work and then he provided all the parts for this one then we realized we need resistors so what you need are these resistors uh, these are like 28 or 30 turns and uh, this guy is 28 turns it's a 50k resistor um, and uh, the, the problem is that when you apply 5 volts the load cell is not going to be at zero point it's going to have some kind of output so you want to bring that output, output down uh, to zero so that's going to be your zero point and so I uh, went to the store, bought these, and then bought those, and then these two, and then these. Basically, I uh, spent another 25 bucks on resistors, and um, I'm nowhere near close of, uh, of getting this fixed. So uh, what I ended up doing is uh, I... I started researching online for uh, uh, an amplifier basically for strain gauges that's readily available it's already made and uh, this is what I found let me make some room here so this is uh, this is the box okay so in the box we got uh, two of these Chinese made, no name, absolutely no name, uh, strain gauge amplifiers and, and they are fairly uh, straightforward. Uh, these are around $13 free shipping on eBay or AliExpress, wherever they come from. Um, what they claim is if you provide 24 volts on these terminals, uh, then you're gonna get a 5 volt excitation on these terminals and then it is reading the strain gauge data it's gonna send through the amplifier it is using a TL064C amplifier and there are some passives here uh, there's a voltage regulator um, but let me uh, look at my let me look at my notes okay I found it so uh, what we got is a, a TL064C uh, that's basically the chip that again has four of these amplifiers has a voltage positive and negative they call it quad op amp so it's an operational amplifier and they call it quad because it's got four of them inside uh, there's a 15 volt, one and a half amp regulator in it. Uh, we got a single op amp. Uh, this is probably being used for uh, voltage uh, regulation. Uh, there's a 7660 uh, 
component. I have no idea about that guy. Uh, there's a transistor and then there's an outer voltage regulator 78L09 so that's a 9 volt uh, regulator. Uh, they claim that it will work off of uh, 12 to 24 volts DC uh, 2 millivolt per volt sensitivity excitation is 5 volts and the output signal can be chosen between 0 and 10 volts. Um, one more important thing uh, I found this on a lot of different websites so one of them claims that these components here are some capacitive and deductive filters so that the 5 volts we are sending out uh, to the um, load cell it is important to have a clear a nice clear 5 volts for that um, I had this box, uh, mounted two of them, so one is going to be for the 500, the other one is for the 1000K. I uh, use uh, two 9-volt uh, batteries. Uh, I'm going to 3D print a box for these, so they won't be loosey-goosey. Just uh, rattling around here. Um, and... Uh, there's a switch here to turn it on and off. I might add some LEDs to make sure that uh, we got uh, 5 volt uh, applied and it's working. So uh, that's that's basically the setup. So if I if I take this um, load cell, I can just uh, hook it up to the uh, amplifier like so and it's basically ready to go so I can take I can take my meter um, find all my stuff okay so this is negative so I'm gonna hook this up to this ground lead make sure it's not touching anything here's my output so you can see that number two is working so um, gonna connect it so I'm gonna connect this to number two because that's the amplifier that we are sensing that's just where the wires are connected right now I'm gonna set this to voltage so hopefully you can see the output and then um, let's double check everything okay everything looks good so I'm going to turn it on and nothing happens. So some of these some of these battery terminals were giving me trouble, but you can see uh, uh, 0.16 volts. So this guy is giving me a voltage input. So if I put compression on it, you can see it's going positive, and if I put tension on it, it's going negative. So how long I can put tension on it? For about two minutes. <laughs> so we are measuring about 70 millivolts right there and I've been using this clamp to put some compression on it. I know it's really busy here everything is just scattered but this is an active workshop so don't start bitching. Okay I'm gonna put compression on it and with this screw I can put a lot more compression than normally I would be able to do with my hands so right there is 0.8 uh, volts okay so that's the uh, amplified signal that we are measuring so the important thing is when I remove this everything should go back to zero and so uh, for that purpose we have these two resistors here okay so one of the resistors we can use to adjust the the zero uh, basically the zero point and you can see it went to negative so have to be real careful with it it's it's pretty sensitive and there you go so no no we have zero 
and that's why these resistance these resistors are for so the strain gauge amplifier has a voltage output and it also has a current output so these two are adjusting the current and the the two on the left side closer to the output they are adjusting the voltage and there's also two toggle switches here number two toggle switch does absolutely nothing and then number one toggle switch basically uh, acts as a 5 volt or a 10 volt output there's there's not much information about it um, I believe uh, the second uh, resistance here resistor potentiometer sorry uh, is being used to adjust the level of the output um, but I'm not 100% sure about it. So what I've done so far is, uh, is put this box together. You can see the data. Uh, this is uh, just a cheap uh, data acquisition, something a, a home hobbyist uh, can uh, um, a Ford. This is the model DI1100 and it's got four channels. These are analog channels and if you use two channels only it will provide 30 kilohertz data acquisition. If you use only one channel uh, then you can go and, and do um, 40 kilohertz I believe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, hook this up to the data and then hook it up to the laptop and uh, fire it up and uh, do some test runs. Got the uh, uh, data hooked up. You can see it's flashing. So I got only one amplifier set up for the data and then I put one trace here so only one channel is active and uh, sampling at uh, 40 kilohertz so right now it's just set up for voltage uh, it is sampling at 40 kilohertz and it's showing me some gibberish voltage there um, I think the limits are uh, one and a half to minus one and a half and uh, I got proper tool for the job and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the recording and then basically excite uh, the load cell you know the load cell is going to vibrate and oscillate and then that dies down and that's what we're trying to capture as a test so F4 starts it um, need to uh, give it some kind of name there you go what is today? 21st. Okay, so there goes it. File size, I don't know, maybe uh, 1600. Uh, and uh, that gives us uh, a couple seconds. So 20 seconds. And uh, let's do it. There you go. So Control F4 to stop it and uh, we can go and uh, open the trace so I think first I need to stop it um, I'm, I'm all new to this okay uh, open okay so this is this is the recording and you can see there's a slider down here and uh, it, it, it shows it shows the recording now I need to go and find that particular area where I excited the system um, I wish this would be easier yeah yeah this is a this is a cheap tool and a cheap software but nonetheless you can see the vibration there if I help it 
there you go so there's the there's the uh, event we are after and uh, you can see what happened is uh, I excited the system with the hammer the load cell was sitting on the table and then there's this bearing housing on the top of the load cell so when I when I hit it when I hit it with the hammer I'm going to excite the system so it's going to start to vibrate and it's going to vibrate up and down so this load cell has a certain stiffness this guy has a certain mass and so that stiffness and mass combination is going to show uh, how high this vibration is going to go you know peak to peak and it's going to show how fast it's going to die down so what you can see also that uh, it is resting it is resting on a table here so this is the this is the center of the table right here and, and both sides of the table um, there is uh, a support for the table and and so this center section of the table is not really supported well so it's going to oscillate up and down and uh, so there's multiple system the t table oscillates uh, this thing is uh, sitting on a uh, mat, a self-healing mat. <laughs> There's also, uh, you know, some kind of plastic material, and then you have multiple masses here that vibrates and oscillate. So that's what we can see on the traces. Maybe if I shut this off, uh, you can see it better. But uh, that's the oscillation. I, I think there is a way to turn the, the points on, but uh, again, this was uh, sample that. 40 kilohertz so now the next thing I need to do is uh, uh, calibrate the unit okay so here's the calibration setup I got the load cell uh, mounted on the top of the power tower and uh, on the bottom section I have uh, the strap and I can basically step into that strap uh, weigh myself every bit of my 82 kilos there's a bathroom scale and I also brought in one of these uh, chucks this is for a uh, lathe and I weighed the chuck it's uh, 32 kilos so I can start stacking uh, the chucks uh, basically turn on the load cell and amplifier see what the voltage reading and then assign a certain weight kilogram weight or force uh, newtons um, to the voltage reading and so at the end of the day if I, if I know that uh, this guy is 32 kilos you know it's showing me 320 newtons uh, then I can assign uh, that voltage reading uh, to the specific weight or uh, force reading and uh, basically go from there. Now the calibration for the two load cells uh, is going to be uh, different uh, for the uh, 1000 kilos and for the 500 kilos that the, the calibration coefficient. That's it for today folks hope you enjoyed it. Um, the details about the amplifiers and the parts that I used uh, you can find it in the description below. Hope to see you next time. Thank you. Bye.